At a gathering of friends, the guests all noticed that the old lady sitting in the main seat was writing with her fingers. She was writing very slowly. She was moving with great difficulty. A few months ago, the old lady had a sudden stroke. She couldn't move without talking. This was the first time she had tried to communicate with them since her illness. They looked at it carefully. They found that she had written the names of her niece and nephew-in-law. The old woman wanted to write something more, but she was unable to continue. Hey, all guessed. The old lady must have wanted to say the two children were to kind to her. Hearing this, she burst into tears. The couple had a relieved look on their faces. The heroine, Mary, was raised by her father in the home of her and in the countryside. Her aunt's husband died young. She had a son. Since she came to live here, Mary has to help take care of her cousin every day. Her life is dull and boring. Mary wished her father would come and take her away sooner, but she never waited for that day to come. Mary grew up to be a big girl. She reached puberty. Like many girls her age, she was looking forward to a beautiful love affair. Suddenly, one day, Mary received the sad news. Her father died in an accident at sea. He would never be able to take her home again. Before Mary can recover from her grief, her aunt announces another decision that will break her. It turns out that her aunt is forcing Mary to marry her son, even though they had grown up together. He was also very fond of Mary, but Mary had no idea what to do with her cousin. He was sick all the time. He was frail and uninteresting. He had none of the vigor and vitality of a young man. He was not what Mary was looking for in a lover. He was not Mary's ideal marriage partner. Mary wanted to refuse, but her strong aunt had no intention of negotiating. The helpless Mary had no choice but to comply. After the marriage, they moved from the country to the sea. Her husband took a job. Mary and her aunt ran a small store. The store her aunt bought was in a bad location, and even the sunlight was hard to get in. With her marriage in discord, Mary was always sitting in the gloomy store and staring at it. She felt that her life was as gray as this room, until a man appeared and rekindled Mary's passion. That day her aunt threw a party. She called some friends over to play cards. Her husband had invited his best friend over. He was not only Mary's husband's current colleague, he was also his childhood playmate. When Mary was not in foster care with her aunt, Mary's husband and David used to play together. It was only later that David moved to the city with his parents. They broke off contact. I never thought they'd be colleagues again. They finally renewed their friendship. The first time they met, Mary's eyes were drawn to this man right away. David was not only healthy and handsome, he also had thick hair and a sexy beard. He smelled like a man. He was Mary's idea of the perfect husband. But then Mary remembered that she was married. She should be faithful to her marriage. So she hastily pushed her thoughts down. The next day Mary saw David again. This time he came to paint a portrait of Mary's husband. Looking at David, who was concentrating on his work in front of the drawing board. Mary could not help but be impressed again. In the following days, they saw each other more often. Her aunt would hold weekly family gatherings and play cards with her friends. David was also invited to each one. Mary became more and more attracted to him. Her whole being became torn and depressed. One night, Mary's husband woke up from a nightmare. He found Mary sitting by the window. Staring, Mary's husband told him he had just had a terrible nightmare. He wanted Mary to come back to bed and hug him. But Mary was completely indifferent to this childish request. The slow-witted Mary's husband finally senses Mary did not seem happy and that she was becoming more and more indifferent to him. In order to make his wife happy again, Mary's husband picked delicate flowers and gave them to Mary. He also began to learn clumsy love words to try to cheer her up. None of this worked. Mary's husband then decided to leave this unhappy place and go back home to live. Mary thought that if she left, she would never see David again, so she hurriedly made excuses to persuade her husband not to go. But Mary's husband's mind was made up before he left. Mary's husband, Mary and David took a trip to the lake together to say goodbye for the last time. During the trip the boat suddenly capsized. They fell into the water. Mary and David were quickly rescued. Only Mary's husband, who was in a weakened condition, died of drowning. By the time his body was retrieved, he was already swollen. His death was horrific. The news of her son's death, the aunt was devastated. She almost cried herself to sleep. She blamed Mary for not watching her son. David helped explain that they were rowing to the center of the lake when Mary's husband suddenly wanted to dance on a whim. Mary could not stop him. Finally, the boat could not maintain balance. That's why the boat capsized. So Mary could not be blamed for the accident. Auntie's friends saw that Mary was sad and blamed herself. They also helped to persuade them to be sorry for their loss. Now they were the only two women left in the house. They should help each other. They shouldn't blame each other. Her aunt was a soft-spoken woman with a soft heart. After she had finished venting her feelings, she offered to apologize to Mary. They changed their plans to return to their hometown.
they decided to stay here and run the store together. Eight months passed. As time went on, her aunt's pain seemed to ease. She reorganized her weekly gathering of close friends. She wanted to return to the life she had before. Her aunt's friends were happy about her transformation, but they also noticed that Mary's condition was deteriorating. She was pale. She was depressed. She still hadn't gotten over her pain. Her friends suggested to her aunt Mary should remarry and perhaps a new marriage would help her out. They thought David and Mary were the best match. David was handsome. They knew each other well. He was also the best brother of Mary's husband. He would be good to his friend's wife and mother. The aunt thought it made sense. She agreed to her friend's suggestion. With the help of everyone, David and Mary were soon married. At the wedding, the aunt looked at them. She smiled. We had been together for many years. She had actually treated Mary as her own daughter. Her aunt solemnly announced. The three of them were now a family. She had written Mary and David's names in her will. When she died, all the property would go to them. This poor mother, she didn't even know what a stupid decision she had made. It turns out that the aunt's son did not fall into the water by accident. He was pushed into the water by David. David then pushed him into the water with the oar and drowned him alive. Mary's husband was begging Mary to help him, but Mary just closed her eyes in horror. She ignored her husband's cries for help. It was murder. Since the day David finished painting the portrait of Mary's husband, he and Mary had been spending a lot of time together. They often met in the attic of the store behind the back of their aunt. It didn't take long. They were no longer satisfied with their clandestine affair. They wanted to be able to sleep in the same bed openly. So David proposed to kill Mary's husband by accident. But Mary had grown up with Mary's husband after all. She couldn't bear the thought. As she struggled with her anxiety, Mary's husband suddenly offered to move back home. Mary didn't want to leave David. She had to agree to this vicious plan to kill her husband. They disguised Mary's husband's death as an accident. Afterwards, Mary pretends to be grieving to attract sympathy from others. What happened next went better than expected. The aunt's friends came forward to help them. They are thus merry in all honesty. However, they soon discover that their marriage is not as good and happy as they thought it would be. Mary's husband's death was like a thorn in their side. The closer they got to each other, the more it hurt. As soon as they saw each other's faces, they unconsciously remembered Mary's husband's previous tragedy. They began to accuse each other. They argued constantly. Mary had nightmares. In her dreams, it is not David sleeping next to her but her husband's hideous, swollen body. Her aunt, who had never recovered from the loss of her son, suffered a stroke. Not only does Mary have to run the store alone, she has to take care of her aunt who is immobile. Her life becomes exhausting and hectic. But David is not at all considerate. He starts to complain about Mary's bad cooking. He even tried to kill his aunt again to get rid of this burden and get his inheritance sooner. Mary has a big fight with him. They lost their heads in the argument. They accidentally let slip that they had murdered Mary's husband. The aunt overheard them, but her aunt had had a stroke and did not move. All she could do was make painful noises. At a friend's party, she tried her best to spell out Mary and David's names. Just as she was about to write down that they were the murderers, she had exhausted all her strength. Her friends thought she was trying to compliment them. Her aunt's tears of despair were interpreted as tears of emotion. But the strong woman didn't give up. One day, she knocked over the ink bottle when Mary was looking. She dipped her cane into the ink and wrote on the floor with difficulty that Mary and David were murderers. Not long after that, a friend of her aunt's came to visit her. She finally saw the message she had left on the floor. She was so frightened that she rushed out of the store to call the police for help. Mary, upstairs, heard the noise and immediately went downstairs to check. When she saw the message on the floor, she immediately realized that the matter could not be hidden. So she called David back from work. The two men, who had already been tortured, decided to win their lives with dignity. They took their end to the river. Then they drank the poison wine in front of her. By the time her friend found the river with the police, Mary and David were already dead. They paid for the two lives of Mary's husband, who drowned in the river.